as we're going to be on 2022. And actually, before I look at the problem, um, I'm going to get set up. So right now, everything is set up for 2016. So let's get set up for 2022. Um, this is how we do each one, but each one has its own, right? Yeah, this is, here's main. Okay, so this is how we set this up. Mod AOC 2022, and we go on, use AOC 2022, colon, colon, star. Here's the runner that we use. This is the output trait that we, oh no, the output function that we created. Here's how we run it. Um, now we're up to 2022, so we can add that. Um, change that to 2022. That's exciting. And then, oh yeah, I assume that everything's going to have that's interesting. Everything is going to have. Well, that's a shame. Okay, so we can we can do this. Our vector needs to have all the other years as well, but we can just oops, fill those in with existing ones. So it's 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, run 2022. Right, uh, 2017, 18, 19, 20. And 21. All right, we got to put something there, and it has to match the the thing. And since it's a selector, maybe I can do an option option function. That then I'd have to wrap it in sums, um, and then change these things. Uh, that's that's for afterwards. That's for afterwards. We just want to get 2022 going right now. All right. Um, Oh, okay. I formatted it and that's how it formatted it. That's fine. So now we need to create 2022. So if I hit build and it should fail to build because this doesn't exist. We'll create this. Um, that doesn't exist. Can we go to that? We can't go to that. Oh, okay. Get status. Oh, I see. NVM mod. Okay, and now we can just cat AOC 2016 mod RS and then just edit it to our... Oh. Yeah, we can do that, right? Oh, I see why. Okay, I got it. Uh, cat this. There we go. Um, we're on day one, so all these go away. Um, and then these change to 22. So every 16 changes to 22. And now if we run it, uh, it fails. Oh, yeah, we don't have mod ASM. Now I can do it. Okay. And I create this. All right. And then I can go ASC this. 2201. All right. Um, and now we have unsolved here. Perfect. All right, I think we're set up. Git status, um, git add source, git status, git commit dash m setup for AOC 2022. Oh, right. Um, I forgot we have to get rid of that O, zero. And then clippy that. Right? I think that's what we need. There's all our tests. Okay, get status. 
We're clean. Okay, good. All right, before we get to the first problem, actually, it should have released. Um, I'm going to hit refresh. Yeah, okay. So I don't know these all these ats and hashes in here. Um, so let's see how this goes. Day one calorie counting. Santa's reindeer typically eat rain, rain, regular reindeer food, but they need a lot of magical energy. Oh, this is 2018, day 25. Okay. To deliver presents on Christmas. For that, the favorite snack is a special type of star fruit. Okay, so we're collecting stars, star fruit stars. Uh, that only grows deep in the jungle. Elves have brought you on their annual expedition to the grove where the fruit grows. Ah, I see. Supply enough magical energy. The expedition needs to retrieve a minimum of 50 stars by December 25th. Yeah, and guess who's collecting them? Not the elves. Uh, although the, the elves assure you that the grove has plenty of fruit, you decide to grab any fruit you see along the way just in case. Click stars by solving puzzles. Right. Okay. The number of calories each elf is cal carrying your puzzle input. Okay, so get input 2022 one. Let's take a look at what this looks like here. Okay, it looks like a bunch of numbers and some blank lines in between them. There's over 2,000 lines. Um, Elf take turns writing down the number of calories contained. Each elf separates their own inventory from the previous elf's inventory by a blank line. Okay, good. We saw that. The list represents the calories of food carried by five elves. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think I understand. Each group of numbers is a, an elf's backpack, basically. In case the elves get hungry and need extra snack, extra snacks, they need to know which elf to ask. They'd like to know how many calories are being carried by the elf carrying the most calories. In the above example, example above, this is 24,000 carried by the fourth elf. 7 plus 8 plus 9. Find the elf carrying the most calories. Alright, so one of the things that I don't have in my library um... I have read to chars. I do have numbers, which grabs all the numbers from a string, uh, from a file. So if a file just had numbers, I could just call numbers on it. Um, I may have forgotten about that. There may be puzzles that I could have used this on. Um, but I don't have anything that can read batches. And I think this happens in more than one. I remember this like in previous years. So this might be worth doing, is writing a function which can read in batches of numbers and the return a vec of strings. Vec of vec of strings. Read records, we'll call it. T as ref, path, path name t, vec vec string. All right, so we say read to string path name. Uh, expect, I'm just copying the function above, unable to open file. And now instead of doing a split on just a single line feed, we can split on double. Um, we can do this, right, I think. Filter it before mapping it. Seems better. Uh, filter s not s is empty. Uh, collect. And then before we do the collect, we actually have to do um, another step. We have to map this into splitting by new line. S dot split. And this is where we do the single new line. And now this gives us the, each individual batch. Let's do this as numbers. Why not? And then we can just use the same logic we had up here. Um, 
right you from stir I did put the separator character in there but that's that was to split up the individual line okay and then we can say here where you as from stir error debug and we have to do that because the parse we're going to we're going to parse each one like this. I'm just copying this here and then we can say expect unable to parse number and that has to have the debug. And then this needs to be collected into a vec of um, u. Which means that this is returning a vec of vec of u. Right, and that's what we did up here, right? We returned a vec, yeah, vec of vec of u. It's doing one vec per line and then splitting those. Okay. Whereas this has multiple lines. Um, and I missed a closing paren on the map. And there we reformat, and it seems to format okay, so maybe that'll parse okay. It won't. Okay, the first error here is method not found in split. Oh, um, oh, this should be map. There we go. And now it's saying we can't build the iterator. Oh, this needs to be on this. Yeah. Okay, we're close. Oh, and then I put a semicolon there. There. Okay, so now we have a function which should return the records. Let, so we have the input file. Let's take a look at our Oh. There it is. So let's take a look at this and all we need to do now in parse is read in the file as numbers. Right? So we just call read num records. We give it a file name and we give it a type of records to read. So we can say let um, records equals a uh, colon uh, vec vec i 64 equals read num records of input slash 2022.01.txt. And I have to put AOC lib. Let's see if that builds. It does not. Because I missed that. The type must be known at this point. Yeah, but I'm telling it what the type is. Oh, no, that's right. Let's try it over here. No. Oh yeah, so we, we have to actually specify the output type somehow. And I thought we just said, oh, vec, vec, i64, maybe like that. Yeah, okay, wow, that was bad. Okay, so now all we need to do is sum each record and find the smallest one. So we can say, and that's, that's part one. Um, we can say records dot iter dot map r for record r dot sum. We probably have to give it a type. This is, oh, this is unknown. Oh, self records. So we actually need to put this in here, yeah records as vec vec i64 um like that and all we have to do here is say default and now we we don't have to say let records we say self records 
we should not need the the type anymore, right? And it's not formatting. What did I do? I forgot to do that. There we go. Self records iter map. There we go. Okay, so now R is a vector of I64, and we should be able to sum up sum them up. Um, but we can't do it that way. We have to iterate on that as well. And probably give it a type. And then we want to say min. Oh no, max. Right? Find the elf carrying the most calories. Um, option. It's an option. Okay, so we have to unwrap. It built. Clippy likes it. Let's run it. And it panicked. Parse int error kind empty. Uh, line 65. Okay, so we have to go back here. Line 65, and I guess maybe we have to filter out blank lines. I didn't think we had to because we were parsing it out this way. Thought maybe the last record's always empty or something. I don't know. 72511. That's our first answer. And it's the right answer. One gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. All right. Um, this was confusing, but all right. Git status, git add source lib. Uh, oh, dot rs, git commit dash m, code uh, helper function to read record, numeric records from a file. Okay. All oh, right. Git um, add input. Git commit dash m. Um, twenty twenty two day one input. Git status. Git add source. Git commit dash m. Twenty twenty two day one part one. All right, that just took me 24 minutes. Um, but the next time I have this problem with records and numerics and stuff like that, we'll be able to do it. Okay, continue to part two. What is part two gonna do? By the time you calculate the answer to the elf's question, they already realize the elf carrying the most calories of food might eventually run out of snacks. That would be horrible. To avoid this unacceptable situation, the elves would instead like to know the total calories carried by the top three elves. Oh, okay. Um, there it is. So the top three elves, what we could do is set the records here, read num records, and then say self records sort by a, b, b compare a, and that way it's sorted in reverse order. And this becomes self records first unwrap. <laughs> right, and that should still be 7211, and I messed up here. Oh, 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 duh. We still have to loop over it. But all we care about is the sums. Duh. Okay, so we can say iter. Um, let, oops, let records equals. So we get all the records, and now what we'll do is we'll iterate over them and generate self records like this. Say records dot iter dot map record record dot iter dot sum. I sixty four dot collect vec of I sixty four. 
and then change this to just be the vector of all the sums because we only care about the sums. We don't care about the individual um, amounts. And then this becomes self records iter max, except we're going to sort this. We're going to say self records sort by. And if we sort it, then the first one is the max, and the first three, I'm sort sorting in reverse order here, first unwrap. Now it works. Or does it? And is it still 72, 511? It is. Okay, so now we just need to take three on that. And that's the answer, right? Self records take oh, iter take three sum by 64. And we come up with 212, 117. That's the right answer. Ta da! Okay. Um, I mean, that's pretty straightforward. We read all the records in. Um, we sum each record up and store it in our records. We sort it. So we only need the first, the, the top three. Uh, we need the first one for part one and the first three for part two. So it doesn't get much easier than that. Uh, 2022, day one, part two. All right. So in order to not have a really, really short stream, as I anticipated, um, we are going to work on uh, 2017. Anyway, here's the advent calendar. Oh, neat. It's got a little, got little wavy lines now. I wonder where we're going. Karki says, now do it without allocations. Well, you got to convert the numbers somehow, right? And that requires allocating. Let, let's take a quick look at that. So what I'm doing here is I'm converting everything to um, the type as I read it. So this read to string is allocating memory to read the entire file into memory. So there's an allocation there. Um, this just filters it out. I think I think S is just an ampersand stir, right? Yeah. Karki says you could process as you read the file. That is true. It would still require us to remember at least the largest one we've read so far, or the top three we've read so far. So we'd need um, we'd need an array of three, and then just keep the max as we go through. There's a um, I think Rust has a read line. And then we could loop over that for line in lines, read lines. Oh, this is read lines. Oh, you, yeah, you'd have to do this. Um, and then it generates an iterator, which will read one line of the file at a time through whatever buffer it there is, um, which does an allocation. So you can't, you can't get away from it. But um, so after this, what am I doing? I am, I've collected all the, all the numbers in an array. And then in 2022, 01, I sum them up and then do another allocation, right? So here's a second set of allocations. Um, I don't know what sort by does under the hood, but it shouldn't count as an allocation. I mean, I can I can try it. Let, let's let's see what happens if I do this in parse. So this this took zero milliseconds. Karki says sort by should be okay. Oh, Smab, how'd you do? Let's uh, let's take a look at the leaderboard. That's that's one thing I didn't do. Let's take a look at the uh, the various leaderboards. Um, here's toggle bits. I'm in seventh place. Wonderful. Uh, Pascal. Oh, you did it first, right off the bat, huh? Oh, that's your GitHub link. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't it doesn't show timing information, right? Ordering. Can I change that? Local score, global score, stars. No. I can't tell what time you did it. Um and then Chael's oh look at that. I'm in thirteenth place on Chael's. All right. Um yeah, I mean, we can we can do this, right? We can say create the buff reader and all that kind of jazz. Following this template. Can I put a use statement in here? You can't put them in functions, right? I don't want to mess things up too much. Um, I guess I could just do this. Uh, use standard fs file. I don't need the path thing. I do need this. And then down here, we can just say, hit the wrong key. And it told me a little too much information. TMI. Karki says I can. you can put use in a function. Oh, OK. Let's try it out. Uh, Smab UK says I was 63.72. Oh, that's it. Yeah, in the global, in the global leaderboard. Um, there's my personal stats. Here we go. I'm 52,000, <laughs> almost 53,000. And you got it at 1822. Oh, okay. So you stayed up to do it, or you got up early to do it. You set up tests to do it as you would write enterprise. Yeah. See, that, that's one of the good things about, about um, AOC is you can, you can make it nice and testy because they give you test cases to work on and stuff like that. And I've done that in the past where I've just created a test case. Uh, to drive everything. And when I do my leak code stuff, I do that too. All right, so we'll read the file. Let file is file open. I keep moving this. That's dumb. Um, input 2022.01.txt. Expect. Boom. Um, and then we get... This is a result also, right? IO lines. Okay. Let line iter maybe equals IO buff reader new file lines. Expect double boom. That's unknown. Let's find out what I did wrong. Oh, we can't do an expect on that? It's putting, oh, it's wrapping it in an OK. OK, so maybe we don't need that. Yeah, OK, so that's our line iter. Um, will this complain about, no? I thought maybe a borrow checker would say this is creating a temporary which is dropped before you use it. OK, so now we should be able to iterate on the lines and build up, at least we could do part one, right? And build up, let mot max equals zero. No, um, i64 max. Oh, no, no, well, we started zero, that's right. For line in line iter, which we don't need to do. We don't need to create that separately, right? We can just do this. <laughs> And that's a result string. Oh, okay. Um, if let okay val is equal to line, should be. Now it's just a string, right? Yep. And now we have to check if it's a blank line. Uh, let mot sum equals zero. If um, val val is empty, um, then we say max is equal to max dot max sum. And then sum equals zero. Else, sum plus equals val dot pars i64 expect invalid number. 
println max is equal to max. Um, oh. All right. Does that come up with the same answer? It does. So that's how that's how you do it without allocations. Although you know we are allocating the lines in here as we read the file. Um, for part two, it's a little more complicated because now we have to m to look at each element of the array, and if we find a max that's bigger than the smallest one, then we have to insert it. Uh, re re we have to replace it. So we can say let mod part two is equal to zero i sixty four zero zero. And then, so this is part one. And then print lin part two is equal to part two dot iter dot sum. Let's see if we can figure out the type from that. It can't, even though even though part two is i64s some kids for whatever reason can't figure out that is i64 why not you think it could assume that all right so part two is zero right now because we haven't updated it Kirky says i've been cheating by using include stir no io for me um hey look if it works it works it's not cheating as long as you come up with the answer Um, then you you are w walking the string though, and you have to parse the string itself. So then there's code there to figure out where the boundaries of the numbers are, right? Um, oh, before we reset sum, we have to check for part two for p in part two iter mute, which I've never used before. Yeah, if sum is greater than p, p equals sum. Uh, yeah, we still have to reset sum to zero, but we want to break. We don't want to keep lo looking and overwriting. All right. Oh, I got it wrong. Look at that. Garky says is stir lines, pretty much the same thing. Oh, yeah, OK, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm a little confused though what I'm doing wrong because I'm looking for any p that's smaller than a new max that we might have, and if it if it is, we replace it and stop looking. It looks like I'm like I may be off by one here. Um, it's per one sub. Oops, seventeen minus two one zero zero six three. 2054, 2054, input 2022. Oh, no. No, I'm just off randomly wrong. Um, so what I could do here is print out what the top three are. Print lin. Uh, self records iter take three. Um, collect back. 64 and see what they are oh and then print them out the other one what is wrong value can't be oh okay yeah and then print these guys out too It, uh, so it got the other two completely wrong. So obviously this this logic doesn't work. Oh, we want to find we want to do the smallest. We want to replace the smallest one with the new sum, not any of them. Okay, so I guess we could cheat, right? Um, what we can do is say if. Uh, part two of zero is greater than or less than sum. 
part two of zero equals sum part two dot sort. Okay, that was the bug. Um, but sorting it each time is kind of annoying. I mean, you think with three three elements, there might be an easier way to do that. But anyway, that works. No allocations. Uh, and now I'm going to blow this all away because I don't want this part of my final solution. Um, yeah, so we are kind of, I mean, we're allocating here because we're converting... But it's a brief allocation because then it goes into sum and then it gets thrown away. Where else are we allocating? That's it, really. I mean, this obviously is allocating space and returning lines of strings. Uh, or, are they strings or stirs? I think they're strings. Yeah, strings. So we are getting allocations there. All right. It's a little bit better. Karki says, I'm sorting three, probably the compiler unrolls the full thing. That, that would make a lot of sense, given the fact that the compiler knows there's only three items. Um, digging around in the ex, um, assembly code, though, I don't know how to do that. Does this thing have a dis? Oh, you know what? Hmm. So in, in target, debug. Okay, it's in build. Yeah, so those are just, hmm. I was looking for, you know, where would the object files be? But I don't know, I don't know Rust's com compilation environment well enough to know. All right, let's throw that away. Boom, gone. Karki says it's not allocating if it goes on the stack. <laughs> it, well, okay, it's not allocating from the heap if it goes on the stack. True. Um, but the parse function, as we parse the string, it's got to be allocating space for the return value that gets returned to, but if it's, because mm, we pass it into um, unwrap, or I did, it's gone now, but I did pass it into unwrap, like here, or I have it going into expect. So this returns some, some, uh, result that got allocated and then expect then returns whatever um, success value we get so maybe I'm getting too technical Karki says the place where the number is returned is reserved on the stack that is absolutely true yes I agree with that oh here we go let's take a look and then Karki also has his okay or theirs sorry um, paste and go and Kark, copy link address, paste and go. Okay, so you got the test input here. Nice. String from UTF-8, standard FS data path, unwrap, unwrap. Okay, so this reads the file. Oh, interesting, okay. I see. So you, you're building you're building the path to the file based on the current directory, and then you put it in data day one, data one. I got it. Want to enable sorting? Parse data to vec. So that looks like. Yep, we split it on the records. Got it. So I I'm hmm, that's good because I put I had to put in checks to make sure that we didn't have any blank lines um, that was in my code I wonder why it's, it's not necessary the way you did it so I've got this not empty not empty otherwise it blows up um, and this just returns a vec of i32 then you call find highest by sorting it returning the last one nice and then first, second, third is find top three. Yes, I know we'll sort two time just in case. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's good.
That's cute. Okay, and then length minus one, length minus two, length minus three, and then you just sum them up. Perfect. That's excellent. Kark, removed useless optimization. Yeah, so figuring out the elapsed time here. So, you know, like I said, it's highly dependent on what's going on on your machine, but that's that's good. Hi uh, says line parse I32. OK, change the result to an option and filter map will skip none. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I like that. I'm going to steal that in a second. All right, uh, solve. Where's where's main? Oh, well, that's what we were looking at. Okay, so the first thing we do is call solve. Input. Input is your include str. It is. Look at that. All right, so you pass it the string. Ordered insert. Oh, that's kind of neat. Slice copy within. Oh, see, so you are checking each one. Oh, you're inserting all of them based on C, which is passed in as an array of three. Ah, I see. And this doesn't blow up if, if you're at the end of the array? Okay. Okay, now do this without any copies. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, parse input on elf. Where's on elf? Yeah, you keep the array ordered, and that, that and that makes total sense, right? So as soon as you find the one that you that it needs to be inserted, you move everything up by one, and insert it where it belongs. I I totally get that. I'm just asking if, what if you're inserting on the last one, the copy within, um. The range must be copy within must ignore it if if these are um I don't know if this this can't go outside of the range. Oh, it says I plus one. So it could. Are you going off the end? It, you wouldn't be able to with Rust, right? Rust would, would tell you, hey, you've you've blown your array limits here. Um what I'm looking for is on elf. I'm not seeing it. Oh, oh, that's just the function. Okay, duh. You're passing in the function. Karki says, I don't fully understand why, but range access does allow for one beyond the end in some cases. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I'm not familiar with copy within, but let's take a look at it. Let's see what it says. Rust slice copy within. Maybe the within means something copies element from one part of the slice to another part of itself using a mem move right range within self to copy from just as a starting index of the range within self to copy to which will have the same length as source the two ranges may overlap the ends of the two ranges must be less than or equal to self len but you're passing in not a range here you're just passing in a number Oh yeah, dest u size. Ooh. Oh, that's that's the starting starting index of the range within self to copy to. Functional panic either your range exceeds the end of the slice or if the end of source is before the start. So this says moving bytes one to five starting at location eight. So that's why we end up with hello wello. Yeah, I'm still still not following this. C minus one makes sense, right? I won't go beyond the range, but I plus one, if I is equal to C, well, maybe copy within checks this range. If this range is, is invalid, it just doesn't bother copying anything. I cannot be equal to C. I, well, okay, you're right. I plus one could be equal to C. Um, I misspoke then. And also C minus one could be equal to I, which would make this range a zero range, right? If this one, you know, because I can go zero, one, two, and C is three, 
c minus one is two, i could be two. This is a, could say two dot dot two, which is a null range. And maybe copy within just skips it at that point because an i plus one would be three, which is outside the range. And maybe it just gets ignored if the, the, the range is null. Let's take a look at the code. Dest is less than or equal to less than or equal to self len minus count. Karki says, um, indeed, that must be why it works. Yeah, it might be just ignoring it. It, but it it's it's running this code. Count must just be zero. And it is checking less than or equal, so it is allowing. If count is zero, then it's perfectly legal for dest to be equal to the uh, length, which is three in this case. Okay. I think I get it. And then on elf, you're passing in this on elf function, which is this ordered insert function. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> 